Today we're exploring the story of what happened to Skype. Once the reigning champion of video calls and instant messaging has undergone a remarkable journey from being a household name to now an afterthought. In this video, we'll take you on a comprehensive tour of Skype's evolution from its inception to its current state and explore the intricate factors that contributed to its rise and fall. However, the question remains, having fallen so far, can Skype ever truly bounce back? Stay tuned, hit that like button, subscribe, and prepare to be intrigued as we unravel the story. In 2003, two Scandinavian entrepreneurs, Niklas Zenstrom and Janus Friss, joined forces with four Estonian tech developers to create Skype and it quickly took the world by storm. The name Skype itself is a fusion of Skype peer-to-peer, -peer, reflecting its pioneering use of voice over IP or VOIP technology. Within a month of its launch, Skype garnered an astonishing 1 million downloads, quickly becoming a tech sensation. The founder's prior experience, including work on projects like Kaza and computer game programming, laid a solid foundation for Skype's innovative approach. The Skype sound, a distinct ringtone, became instantly recognizable. Users flocked to Skype for its user-friendly interface, clear call quality, and the promise of free international communication. By 2005, just two years after its launch, Skype already boasted 54 million users and by mid-2006, Scott boasted a staggering 115 million users, earning recognition as the fastest-growing internet company at the time. Skype's early success was propelled by several factors. It introduced a disruptive technology at that time, VOIP, enabling users to make free or low-cost calls over the internet, challenging traditional phone services. And actually, Skype became so efficient that some countries even had to ban it to protect their phone companies from running out of business. Additionally, it entered the market at a time when social media apps weren't as prevalent, making it a preferred platform for communication. The simplicity of its interface and ease of setting up calls contributed to its rapid adoption. eBay acquired Skype in 2005 for $2.6 billion with the aim to facilitate communication between buyers and sellers on its e-commerce platform. However, this integration didn't unfold as anticipated, as users continued to rely on conventional means of communication rather than Skype. And to address these challenges, eBay appointed a new CEO, Josh Silverman, in 2008. Silverman redirected Skype's focus towards video calls introduced subscription programs and premium accounts, and developed an iOS app that garnered 1 million downloads in just two days. These efforts paid off, leading to substantial growth in 2009 with Skype adding around 380,000 users per day and generating $740 million in revenue. Despite this growth, eBay decided to sell 70% of Skype to an investment group led by Silvershake for $1.9 billion in 2009, allowing Skype to operate more independently. Under the new acquirers, the number of downloads increased to 1 billion by 2010, roughly one year after the purchase with a near monopoly on video calls. 25% of the world's video calls were through Skype. However, underneath this glimming facade, what most people did not know at this time was that Skype was $700 million in debt. Skype's journey took a significant turn when it was acquired by a tech giant Microsoft in 2011 for an impressive $8.5 billion. This move, led by then-CEO Steve Ballmer, aimed to integrate Skype into Microsoft's extensive ecosystem of products and services. Microsoft's vision was to create a seamless experience for users across multiple devices and platforms with Skype serving as a key component in this strategy. Post-acquisition, Skype became closely intertwined with Windows operating systems, Office 365, and Xbox, offering users a unified experience. 
However, this transition also marked the departure of Skype's founders Niklas Zenström and Janus Fries, who ventured into new entrepreneurial ventures such as Starship Technologies and Atomico. As Microsoft took the reins, Skype's future became closely tied to whatever the direction the tech giant envisioned for the platform. Skype's integration into the Microsoft ecosystem was a pivotal moment in its evolution. The platform became an integral part of Microsoft's suite of products, designed to cater to both personal and business users. Microsoft sought to leverage Skype's established user base, aiming to create synergies that would propel Skype to new heights. Microsoft's integration efforts included combining Skype with Microsoft Teams, a collaboration platform that targeted the business market. While Skype had over 2 billion users per day, Microsoft still faced challenges in converting this massive user base into substantial profits. Microsoft Teams, launched in 2016, drew inspiration from Skype's features while addressing some of its weaknesses, quickly gaining traction in the market. This convergence of communication tools within the Microsoft umbrella, however, would have a lasting negative impact on Skype's trajectory. As Skype continued to evolve within the Microsoft ecosystem, it encountered fierce competitions from other messaging and VOIP services. Emerging platforms like WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger, and Zoom presented formidable challenges to Skype's long-lasting dominance. These newcomers offered enhanced features, user-friendly interfaces, and broader compatibility across various devices something that Skype was seriously lacking. The rise of social media apps with integrated video conferencing capabilities further intensified the competition. These apps provided seamless communication experiences, making Skype seem somewhat dated in comparison. Users, especially younger generations, gravitated towards these platforms, leaving Skype facing the challenge of struggling on retaining its user base. Despite its early meteoric rise, Skype gradually witnessed a decline in user numbers. This decline can be attributed to several factors, including the rise of competing platforms, changing user preferences, and the perception that Skype had become somewhat outdated. While Skype remained a trusted tool for many, it was no longer the undisputed leader in the evolving landscape of digital communication. Another significant change was the transition of Skype's infrastructure from a peer-to-peer -peer architecture to cloud servers in 2013. While this shift held potential benefits such as improved scalability and reliability, it also introduced challenges and drove some users away due to a less satisfactory user experience, particularly on mobile devices. Skype's mobile application often felt like a downsized version of its desktop counterpart rather than a tool specifically designed for mobile. Skype, like many tech giants, faced its share of security and privacy concerns. Notably in 2013, it was revealed that Microsoft had cooperated with the NSA surveillance program, raising concerns about user data privacy. These revelations prompted some users, particularly those with heightened privacy concerns, to seek alternative platforms that prioritize security and confidentiality. While Skype took steps to address these concerns and enhance its security features, the incident left a lasting impact on its reputation. Maintaining user trust in an era of growing privacy awareness became an ongoing challenge for Skype. In an effort to stay relevant and address the changing dynamics of the digital communication landscape, Skype underwent a series of rebranding and feature updates. Microsoft introduced a refreshed look and feel to the platform, along with the features like Skype for Business and Skype Meetings. These changes were aimed at catering to both personal and business users in an attempt to adapt to evolving user expectations. However, it's worth noting that while these updates were intended to enhance Skype's appeal, they also drew criticism from some users who felt that the platform was shifting away from its core strengths of smooth video and audio calling. This tug of war between pioneering new features and preserving its original simplicity that initially endeared Skype to its users remained a central theme in its evolution. 
and the unexpected arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 had a profound impact on the digital communication landscape. As lockdowns and social distancing measures came into effect, people around the world turned to video conferencing and messaging tools for work, education, and socializing. Skype, like the other video conferencing platforms, experienced a surge in usage. However, it's important to note that while Skype did see growth during this period, it paled in comparison to the explosive rise of Zoom. Skype's user base grew from 24 million in February of 2020 to 40 million in March of 2020. A significant increase but still far from Zoom's 300 million daily users during the same time period. This highlighted the competitive changes Skype faced, particularly from newer and more user-friendly alternatives. Looking ahead, the future of Skype appears to be dynamic and ever-evolving. Microsoft continues to invest in the platform with a focus on improving performance and introducing new features. While it may no longer be the undisputed leader in the field of digital communication, Skype retains its status as a valuable tool for countless users worldwide. The competition in the digital communication space remains fierce, with an array of platforms catering to various needs and preferences. Skype's future will likely depend on its ability to adapt to changing users' expectations, maintain its user base, and explore new opportunities in a rapidly evolving landscape. And as we draw our exploration of what happened to Skype comes to a close, several key takeaways emerge. Skype's journey reflects the challenges faced by established platforms in adapting to evolving market dynamics. The simplicity and early success of Skype were pivotal in its growth, but they couldn't prevent its decline in the face of fierce competition. In the tech world, it's not enough to be the first. One must continuously evolve. Microsoft's ownership has not revitalized Skype to its former glory, yes, with Microsoft Teams gaining more traction in the market. The future of Skype remains uncertain as it faces ongoing competition and the ever-evolving preferences of users. Before we wrap up, we'd love to hear your thoughts. What's your experience with Skype? And how do you see its future? Do you think it'll ever outshine its competitors and regain its position at the top? Share your insights and comments below. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, a like, subscribe for more engaging content. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the rise, challenges, and future of Skype. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and we'll see you in the next video.